Hello everyone, welcome back to Block On. I hope you have already watched the part one and part two of the Lumber Plexus block tutorial. So without wasting time, let's begin with part three, which includes in-depth analysis of various ultrasound guided approaches for Lumber Plexus block. In ultrasound guidance, the problem is the structures are deep and uh, it is difficult to identify the lumbar plexus. So we usually use, and it is recommended also to use the dual guidance. We have one sagittal approach that is paramedian sagittal approach and two transverse approaches that is paramedian transverse oblique scan, intertransverse space view, and the subcostal view that is popularly known as the shamrock approach. These are the sonographic pattern you need to remember while scanning for the ultrasound guided lumbar plexus. The trident sign is associated with the paramedian sagittal and wave sign with the PMTOS and the shamrock thumbs up or the bunny head sign with the subcostal view. So coming to the paramedian sagittal, here we are keeping the probe just over the transverse processes of the L3, L4 and the L5 vertebrae. So you can start scanning from the midline that is identify the spinous process, then the lamina, then articular process and then the transverse process just like you do while scanning for the neuraxials. Or you can directly place the probe 3 to 4 centimeter lateral to the spinous process. So here I have already drawn the landmarks. This was the same landmark we have drawn during the landmark guided or PNS guided block. Here your target is to identify the trident sign. Then look for the acoustic window in between two transverse processes. Here if you see carefully this particular element is thicker, bigger and brighter as compared to the intramuscular transverse striations. These longitudinal striations are characteristics of the swast major muscle in a hyperechoic striations in the background of a hypoechoic muscle. So how to identify the lumbar plexus element because these are these look similar. So this is bigger, brighter and it is situated at the junction of the anterior two-third and the posterior one-third of the swast major muscle. So if you go cephalar direction then you might be able to see the lower pole of the kidney moving with the respiration at the level of L3 transverse process and above. And sometimes you might miss the transverse process. So for that, you just need to uh, tilt the probe in the, in the medial direction so that you will get the transverse process or the trident view. So once you get the trident view, the next step is you insert your needle through this acoustic window, stimulate the lumbar plexus and once you get the desired response, you can deposit the drug. The next one is the paramedian transverse oblique scan. So here, just rotate the probe at 90 degrees from the previous probe position. And we will have two windows. One is through the transverse process and the other one is through the intertransverse space. Obviously, we cannot see beyond the transverse process as we will choose this window that is intertransverse space window to visualize the lumbar plexus. This looks like a wave pattern. So this is the articular process. This is the intervertebral foramina and this is the vertebral body. And on the right side, you will see IVC here. And on the left side, you will see the aorta. Here, you are seeing the striations in the cross-sectional view. That's why you are getting it as the dots or speckles. If you look carefully, in this area, there is a one hyperechoic structure with hypoechoic surroundings. So that is the swast compartment with the lumbar plexus element. So once you identify the lumbar plexus element, you have to insert the needle either out of plane or in plane and stimulate and deposit the drug. The third approach that is the subcostal approach, uh, which is popularly known as shamrock approach, we keep the ultrasound probe in between the costal margin and the iliac crest area, just behind the mid axillary line. You will get an image like this on your ultrasound machine, where the swast major muscle, quadratus lumborum, and the erector spiny muscle forms the three leaves of the shamrock and transverse process from the stalk. Or you can remember it as the thumbs up sign where the thumb corresponds to the transverse process and knuckles corresponds to the vertebral body. 
or a bunny head sign where this years corresponds to the uh, transverse process and the uh, head corresponds to the vertebral body and the nose corresponds to the abdominal aorta or IVC. So this pattern recognition is very, very important to identify before identification of the lumbar plexus. Now, once you recognize this pattern, the next step is to remove the transverse process from your view so that you can advance the needle towards the lumbar plexus element. This transverse process is the main barrier while some caudal or cephalic tilting, you can remove the transverse process from your view. And if you see here from the intervertebral foramen, the lumbar plexus element is coming out from here in this swast compartment area. Now needle insertion can be done by this technique that is 4 cm lateral to the midline or you can follow this technique close to the probe. In this technique, the needle visibility will be very good as the ultrasound beam is exactly perpendicular to the shaft of the needle. So here, first we have to identify the pattern recognition and then uh, always put the color doppler to identify the blood vessels in the swast major muscle and also the needle trajectory area. So once you confirm that there is no blood vessel coming in between, so you can insert the needle either from this direction or from this direction to reach towards the lumbar plexus element. In this particular case, I avoided this direction as I could see a small pulsatile blood vessel here to avoid the vessel injury. And as you can see, the moment it touches the lumbar plexus element, we could get the stimulation. And once you are getting the EMR at 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 milliampere, you can start injecting the local anesthetic. Remember, here we are using the neurostimulation for identification purpose, not for the localization. Also, look for the anti-grid spread of local anesthetic while injecting the drug. It should create an oval shaped layer around the neural element of lumbar plexus. It should not come towards the intervertebral foramina. The drug spread or diffusion towards the intervertebral foramina is the positive factor for the epidural spread and the bilateral block. So if your drug is going anti direction and a post-block scanning, if you see the oval shaped drug spread around the lumbar plexus element, so that should be your perfect lumbar plexus block. You should not expect any complications here. 